Today in our Rescue Zoo Adventures, we are gonna take a closer look at the new bird aviary areas that we are building for when we get new animals into quarantine. We're also gonna have a conversation about all the previously privately owned animals we get in here in the Rescue Zoo. And in the end, there's a bonus animal segment that I think you guys are gonna enjoy. So let's get started with today's Play Rescue episode. Hi guys, and welcome to another episode here on the Play Rescue channel. This week in the Rescue Zoo, we are starting out with a bit of renovation stories because since we are rescue mean we get a lot of new animals in and a lot of new animals who are in need of a new home. And that's a, it's a big pressure. It's a big pressure on us because we need to constantly be finding funding to be able to keep up with the standard that we are having for our animals. I should say that we never take in any animals if we are not certain that we can build the enclosures and keep up the dietary needs and medication and transportation and all that stuff. But in some cases, the enclosures are not done before the animals get here. So that means that we have animals in the quarantine area for a period and in that next time when we are waiting the eight weeks for them to get out of quarantine, we are building nonstop. Which also means that there is always something happening in the rescue zoo. Um, and here I'm not, I'm just talking about the building part. There's always been built something or renovated something or, you know, it's always something happening. Next up, we are gonna have a conversation about how there's a general issue in the pet trade world, where a lot of people buy animals without doing much research or thinking about the long time commitment that most animals are. I had a conversation with one of our keepers, Alex, about this, so let's hear what she had to say. Hi, Alex. Hi, Nagel. So, uh, us being a rescue zoo, we have mm -hmm. many different jobs. Yeah. And one thing that occurs a lot is that private people obtain pets in general, uh -huh. sometimes illegal, sometimes just in quotes, normal pets. Mm. And one thing that happens a lot is that people simply do not do their research or at some point in their life cannot, you know, have them anymore. Yeah. What, what's the story? What happens here? So what happens here is, here at the rescue, we do, we get a lot of animals from different circumstances. And one of them is from the pet world. People who get pets obtain different animals in various ways that are fun for a couple of months and then they don't want it anymore or they haven't done their research, they don't know what the animal actually needs to have a happy life or a good living standard or even people who obtain things legally then there's nowhere else really to send them than here with us and luckily enough uh, our, our doors are always open to help out in these sorts of situations because it can also uh, be a situation where someone's not able to keep the, the, the pet for, for any longer and that is the situation that happened this week uh, that we got um, six guinea pigs in um, Luckily enough, they were all getting on perfectly together and we have a wonderful area in the zoo, in the rescue zoo, that we have on a grassy area down at the other end where all our guinea pigs can actually have outside, outside access uh, during the summer. And so once they've been in quarantine, like anything else that comes from, a, from an area that we don't know, so they're in quarantine right now, uh, once they pass that and everything proves they're happy and healthy, then they'll get to come down to our other guinea pigs out on the, on the grassy area. And, and the reason why it's especially sort of interesting to talk about mm. the guinea pigs, because you could say that they are not the most exotic animals in the world and we mm. are the first rescue center for exotic animals yeah. uh, who, who has been uh, you know, in need of help. The, the reason why it's interesting is because it's a very common pet, which means that it happens so, it, so much. Unfortunately, it is something that happens so, so much. Um, I children mean, children are getting them. Well, this is it. You get, you get them for, because it's, it's, it's just something you see in the pet store and it's something that's small. So you think, yes, we can take care of this at home. And then usually the it's bought for the children and the children lose interest after a couple of months. And then it's like, well, what do you do? Um, and I know a guinea pig's not the most exotic thing, but at the end of the day, our rescue is here for any individual that we can help. 
if we have the possibility we will try and help um, and luckily enough because we have the big the big uh, grass area for them there's a lot of room for them not that I'm saying to go out and get a guinea pig unless you are prepared remember guinea pigs can live anywhere from two to five years so unless you want to dedicate two to five years to a guinea pig don't get one but uh, when situations occur and if somebody can't uh, keep them then obviously we'll try and help if we can I, I think pandemic times as well has seen a rise in people had to find something for their children to do. Yeah, that's a, a touchy subject, that one. Yeah. So <laughs> but yeah, just do your homework before you get a pet and remember it is a life you're taking into your house. We have almost reached the end of today's Play Rescue episode, but as I promised you guys in the start, here's a special animal treat. Thank you all for watching, and if you made it this far, please leave a nice comment down below about what you think about this animal coming right up. Take care, guys. Hi guys and welcome to the YouTube channel of the Play Rescue Livestream where we are live streaming live from the first zoo and rescue center for exotic animals in Denmark. Hope you're going to enjoy our daily adventures with all the 600 animals. It was Nico here. Take care guys.